Hi, I'm Marty Shupak. Welcome to Shupak Sports, our YouTube channel. We, sp we speak about sports tips. We have interviews. And also we do a little bit of uh, parenting advice, if we could. We're going to be talking about breaking in a brand new baseball glove. Before we do, I'd like to ask a trivia question, which I love. Because we're talking about gloves, there was a time in baseball where players would leave their gloves on the field. The question is, what year did baseball institute a rule that they cannot leave their gloves on the field? I'll give you a couple of choices. 1952, 1954, 1956, or 1959. We'll come back to that at the end of this episode. Buying a baseball glove is a, a, a huge, huge investment. And I just got to tell you, when I was young, my first glove, I was thrilled when my dad went to buy it. Uh, he didn't know anything about baseball. It didn't matter to me if it fit right, if it looked right, whatever. I was just happy to have it. After that, though, what I did was because our area was very sports minded, I'm sure just like yours, where we played ball every year, every night till we got called into dinner and sometimes beyond that call. But I was the one of two lefties who lived on the block. And fortunately, the older lefty up the street, a guy named Peter, I would inherit his gloves when he went to buy a new glove. So I'm just want to just give you an idea that, you know, you might want to ask around your community, your neighborhood, before you go out and spend money, if somebody has grown kids, you might want to ask them if they have a glove or gloves that they don't need anymore. It might save you a few dollars and the gloves will be broken in. Now, it's not going to be broken in to your hand or your son or daughter's hand, but at least it's a start. And when you move on from that used glove and buy a new glove, you'll be a little more educated uh, uh, instead of just going out and buying a new glove. So ask neighbors. Also keep in mind the new glove is gonna be stiff as you know. I'm gonna repeat this over and over again. The best way to break in a new glove is repetitions that play catch with your brother, sister, mother or father. The best way to break in a new glove is to have as many repetitions as you could play and catch. What this does is the leather fibers will actually mold to your hand, which is what you want. It's your glove, all right? Besides that, when you buy the glove, whatever brand it is, that's the brand instructions you want to follow. If you buy a Rawlings glove, don't follow a... Wilson instruction uh, pamphlet or on YouTube. Follow the brand that you bought, all right? Make sure you choose the glove wisely. You don't want it to be too big. I made a mistake when my kids were young. I thought every couple of years they should get a bigger glove. That's not necessarily true. And I learned when I was at a baseball game in person, I was being hosted in the person I was with knew a couple of ball players. One of them who came over was a second baseman and he was holding his glove as we were talking to him. Now this is a major leaguer. I was amazed that his baseball glove was not much bigger than the outline of his hand. So it doesn't have to be too big. Check with your league as far as the standards and the measurements because um, some of them have limitations. As far as breaking in the glove, you're going to have a lot of people that are going to give you different advice. I find the best way to do it is when you get the glove, and this is mine, try to work it in yourself. And some of the things you want to do with, and this has been worked in for a number of years, is you want to just start stretching it with your hands like this. You want to pull on the fingers on the laces all the way around, all right? Also, if you could do it, you put it inside out and you do the same thing. 
You go back and forth like this, pull on the fingers, just like this. When or if you put on oil, make sure you put the oil on, not directly, but with a rag and try to do it evenly. If you put it on directly, a lot of times you could get a stain um, and it'll uh, look different than the other uh, rest of the glove. Question comes up is should we put the glove like um, overnight, wrap it up? And I would say, yeah, if you could. And what I like doing is I like taking a 11 inch softball and you can take a belt like this or a strap and you just tighten it. And there you have that. Now, a lot of people recommend to use a mallet. I think it's a great idea. I don't think you should have to go out and buy one for anywhere from 20 to $50. I think really, if you take a glove, and what I did was this, I took a bat and I attached a ball with duct tape at the end. And if you put it on a sound surface, some people think you should put it on a soft surface. I don't. I think you need some resistant. I like to do it on some grass. And the reason being, if you know anything about, for instance, um, CPR. If you're giving CPR to someone, they always say you want to try to do it on a hard surface. Okay. I believe it's the same concept with the glove. If you're going to do it on a couch or on a bed, it's going to lose the effectiveness of what you're doing. But if you do it on some grass and you hit it hard, turn it over, hit it hard again, keep doing it. And this is pretty, a pretty sound way of doing it. And it helps unstiffen the glove. Another thing you could do is besides the mallet, I mean, it doesn't have to be a mallet. I have this five pound weight. You could start hitting it like this, all around just to unstiffen it. That helps also. A couple of uh, things that maybe you shouldn't and or you should or shouldn't do, and I'll just, if you don't mind, I'll just read them. Here are some do's when you buy a new glove. Uh, again, I mentioned it, the best way to break in the glove is with repetitions, having a catch. Check with your neighbor first for a used glove. Be consistent with the brand of glove and the, the directions they offer. You can store a ball in the pocket of the, glove, of the glove overnight, and I recommend using the 11 inch softball wrapped with a belt or rope. Stretch the finger part of the glove every which way by hand and turn it inside out if you could. If you use glove oil, spread the oil with a rag. Don't apply it direct. And if you could use a glove mallet uh, to pound it and you do it, like I said, not on a real soft surface. It doesn't have to be on concrete. I like on a nice patch of grass. Also, don't just put your son, your daughters, or your name somewhere with a permanent marker on the glove. You got to put your phone number. I can't tell you how many times I've been out of a field and I could barely read someone's name and it's not going to do me any good if I don't know the person. Put a phone number on the glove in case it's misplaced or you leave it out of field. Some things not to do. Don't run over it with a truck or car. Some people think that you should. You could cause damage by the abrasion, but rubbing against the glove. You don't want to do that. Don't bake or microwave it. People have done this, but what happens is if you do bake or microwave it, it's going to ruin the laces. You don't want to do that. Don't get gloves too big. I touched upon that. Control and feel is the key to using a glove. Don't over-treat the glove with oil. You could put a little on it at a time, like a little dab, but don't overdo it. And don't overexpose your glove to heat. It, the heat will loosen the leather short term, but remember, the best way to break in the glove is to do it slowly, 
So it really molds into your hand because you want it for a long time. And I was looking at some interesting statistics and I'll have an article link at below this uh, YouTube episode, but here, former shortstop major leaguer, Adam, oh, I don't even know if he's a shortstop. Adam Everett used the same baseball glove for six years. Shortstop Jordy Mercer used the same glove for 10 years. Former major leaguer Chet Lemon used the same glove for 16 years. Take your time picking a glove out. Take your time working it in and take care of it as you would a pet and never forget where you leave it. <clears throat> okay, so I want to thank everyone who subscribed. I appreciate it. We're going to keep this format, give you as much information as we could. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, oh, products. I've been uh, emphasizing this book. I've had some good feedback with it. I had a question from someone actually out in Oregon because I recommend it. And I, I don't want you to spend money you don't have, but if you do spend it, by the way, if you're coaching or you're a parent, any extra money you want to put into baseball, softball, do, do whatever you want. But I used to put it into baseballs or softballs, okay? That's where I find is the best way to spend extra money. But if you get this book, if you're starting out to coach, baseball coaching, I recommend you get the hard copy. This will last you. You use it as a resource. And I also recommend you get the ebook. The reason I recommend the ebook, I set this book up in the format the way I wanted it set up when I, if I was reading someone else's book. I have 60 sample practices. So in the sample practices, each drill that's listed is a live link to the, to the explanations. All right, we're gonna close this out. Again, thank you for those that subscribe. And the question, trivia question was this, back when in baseball, they used to allow you to keep your, leave your gloves on the field between innings. They changed this rule. The question was, what year did they change this rule? And I gave choices, 1952, 1954, 1956, or 1959? The answer is 1954, and the rule number is rule number 3.14. So that's actually easy to remember. That's like the pi rule. So keep checking out the different tips we have, our interviews on the Shoepack Sports Channel. And until next time, I'll meet you at third base.